Well, hello everyone. It is April and today we're here to do a little book haul. I have decided that October's book hauls, of which there will be two or maybe three, but probably just two, are going to be mystery, thriller, horror inspired because I've been picking up a lot of those lately. Publishers have been sending me books as well. Very, very lucky girl I am, I know. So this little haul is going to be mysteries and thrillers. The next haul will have more horror bits in it. The first book is Dark Things I Adore by Katie Latari. Uh, this was kindly sent to me by Source Books. Thank you guys so much for sending this my way. Uh, it has just come out at the end of September, so you can absolutely get your hands on this now. And this is very Dark Academia vibes. Uh, it does have a bit of My Dark Vanessa vibes to it in my mind. I haven't read it yet, so I don't know. This one follows two timelines. We go to 1988 when a group of art casts gather together at a small prestigious art camp nestled in the Maine woods. There are a lot of secrets that go down over the course of the time that they are there. Then we fast forward to 2018 when esteemed art professor Max Durant has arrived at his protege's home. And I think she is incredibly gifted. I think she might even be famous. Um, and he's there to support her and, you know, go through her thesis collection with her. Uh, meanwhile, that woman, Audra, has engineered every aspect of their weekend together. Every detail, every conversation. She has woven a perfect web. Um, she knows what happened in the summer of 1988 and Max has a secret. And he is guilty of something. I think it is sexual abuse of a minor. And she's going to bring him to his knees. And I just, yes, yes, that sounds good to me. It really does. I also really like this cover for fall. Oh my goodness, it's stunning. Okay, so let's read the first line, shall we? Audra, Friday, March 16th, 2018. A smudged barking pattern, male. Okay, not at all a five star first line, but I have very high hopes of this book being really, really good. Next, I picked up Pretty Little Wife at a Value Village. This is by Darby Kane. And I think this was a pretty big book a couple of years ago. This is Thriller. And we follow Lila Richfield, who lives in this beautiful college town. And people are going missing. A student has gone missing, maybe two students actually. Also her own husband has gone missing. And police are starting to feel like there might be a connection between these disappearances. And uh, everyone is worried about the whereabouts of her husband, who is a high school teacher. And everyone's really worried about him vanishing. And, and that includes Lila, because the last time she saw him, she was the last to see her husband's body, and now it's gone. What? What? So let's read the first line, chapter one a monster okay not a not a five star first line but i think it's going to be a fun one next up is home stretch by graham norton uh he is an incredibly funny tv presenter he's hilarious he's also the writer of one of the best books that i read this year called a keeper very mysterious um and this is about a small irish community it's 1987 and everyone's preparing for this wedding. Uh, very sadly and tragically, uh, the bridal party, bridal and groom party, get into a huge car accident. I think the weekend of the wedding. Three of the people in the car live and three of the people in the car die. And we follow one of the survivors named Connor. He's decided to leave. Uh, this little Irish town because he just can't handle it. I don't know if he was driving or what have you. He's just got to leave. And so he leaves 
to go to Liverpool and then London and then New York. And he's trying to create a new life for himself and having a really hard time of it. And I think his secrets follow him there. And it just sounds so good. Also, I donated to some uh, like kids literacy charity thing while I was at Indigo when I was picking this up. And they gave me a little bookmark of like a little kiddo made this. I love it. I was very, very happy with that. Anyway, that has nothing to do with the book, but it will for me because I'm gonna use that when I'm reading this book. So let's read the first line. 1987, it was Bill Lowler who found them first. It's like a four star first line, who found them first. Very close to a five star first line, but not quite there. Does sound really good. Next up is Friends Like These by Kimberly McCrate. This was kindly sent to me by HarperCollins US. Uh, this is about college friends who all harbor a secret from their past. In college, something terrible happened and each and every one of them have been harboring the secret for many years. They have decided to get together Again, it's a reunion, but it's also a desperate intervention. And they will do anything to keep each other's secrets. And I think it might end up going violent. Uh -oh. That sounds like fun. And Kimberly McCrate writes really good characters. So definitely interested in this one. Let's read the first line. You were the one who started it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not a five-star first line, but it does sound really good, right? Next is a book that was kindly sent to me by Penguin Random House Canada. Thank you guys so much. This is Mrs. March by Virginia Faito. So Jen Campbell recently read this book and raved about it. She said that it might, will probably be one of her favorites that she's read this year. And so I'm, as you can imagine, desperate to read it now. Um, so this is about... The March family, Mrs. March in particular. Her husband, George, is a prolific author. She's very proud of him. And his latest release has hit stores. Everyone is reading it. She goes to the supermarket and she stumbles upon a neighbor who comes up to her and says, hey, you know, George wrote this new book. And like, meanwhile, she hasn't read it, but she's like, yes, that's right. And the neighbor's like, hey, how do you feel? about the main character who is, side note, meant to be incredibly unlikable. How do you feel about the main character being uh, apparently uh, written based on you? And she's like, I didn't know that. How do I get out of here? I'm so embarrassed, humiliated, feel betrayed by my own husband. And she goes home and she starts to wonder about her husband and her marriage with her husband. She starts like snooping around in her is his office and he's got like a newspaper clipping in there about a missing girl. And she's starting to wonder, does he have anything to do with it? Who is this guy? It's meant to be incredible. This is also meant to be uh, being adapted to the screen and I think I think Elizabeth Moss is going to be playing Mrs. March. And I can't wait to read this. Okay, first line. George March has written another book. Not a five star first line, but I'm really, really excited about this one. So this next book, I wasn't even sure if I could include it in this video. It is meant to be some sort of mystery. And on the back, A.J. Finn, who blurbs everything, uh, said that this is the very best. It's like Ton of French and Dennis Lehane. So definitely in the mystery vein. This is We Begin at the End by Chris Whitaker. And this follows two main characters. We follow the chief of police, uh, Walk. That's his name, Walk. And uh, he, years ago, sent his very best friend, Vincent, to prison. Uh, and now, it's been 30 years, he's about to be released, 
We also follow Duchess, who is a 13 year old girl and kind of like an outlaw. And when Vincent arrives to town, he brings with it a lot of issues. And so Walk and Duchess work together? I don't know much about this book other than a lot of people have said that they've enjoyed it. And I have heard some good buzz about it. So let's read the first line. You see something and you raise your hand. Not a five star first line. So uh, the next is the second in a series. Um, I have the first one in this series called The Tenant by Katrine Angberg. And this is The Butterfly House, its sequel. So The Butterfly House follows our two detectives and they are dealing with a series of murders that are linked to patients at a hospital. Um, so it says that a nurse fills a syringe with an overdose of medication and enters the room of a patient. Five days earlier, a paper boy stumbles upon a dead woman. Her, mar her arms are marked with incisions. The cause of death, the draining of all the blood in her body. And they are trying to get to the bottom of what is happening here. Uh, so that sounds really good. I still have to read The Tenant, but I saw this at a Value Village and I was like, what if I really like that? And I want all of them in the series, you know, so I got it. Uh, let's read the first line. Prologue. The clear glass ampoules. I don't even know what that is. Ampoules. A-M-P-O-U-L-E-S. We'll be consulting the dictionary after this. The clear glass ampoules sat in the locked cabinet alongside disposable syringes and sharp sharps containers, morphine, morphine and oxycotton for strong pain, propofonin for atrial fibri fibrillation and the blood thinner Prodoxa, safely sealed in little boxes and wrapped in clear plastic, Standard medications in the cardiology department at Copenhagen's National Hospital, paths to relief uh, and a better quality of life, sometimes even a cure. Can you believe that was all one sentence? And can you believe I got through it somehow terribly? Uh, but I did get through. That's not a five star first line. If anything, I'm angry with how long the sentence is. <laughs> so there's that. One more. And this is, again, part of a series, uh, the Lars Kepler Junalina series. This is The Rabbit Hunter. Again, saw it at a value village. You guys know I am trying to work my way through this series. I have the third in the series on my October TBR. Fingers crossed I'll actually get to it. <laughs> this sounds actually quite creepy. Listen to this. A stranger wearing a mask stands in the shadow of a garden. He's watching his first victim through the window. He will kill him slowly, make it last, and make him pay. And Junalina has to find out who this killer is. He is reportedly called the rabbit hunter. Sounds terrifying. Let's read the first line, even though I'm extremely nervous because I don't want to ruin anything from the rest of the series, but let's, I think this is the pro prologue, so it'll be okay. It's early morning and the still water of the inlet is shimmering like brushed steel. Not a five star first line. And in fact, we have not had a five star first line in this book haul, which is upsetting, but that's okay. These are all of the books. All of the books that I want to share with you here today, there are many, many, many more books that I will be sharing with you because I lost my mind in September and just bought books upon books upon books. It was almost like a, I'm feeling crappy. I need to buy things. Trust me. There, it was beyond books. It was so poor uh, and shoppers aren't like, oh. I need to have like a no by October, which won't happen, but you know what I mean. I need to chill out a little bit. Anywho, <clears throat> let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books, if you liked any of these books, some of them are just coming out. Are you gonna like order them, order from the library? What have you? I'd love to know. And I'll chat with you very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>